Welcome to another episode of Breaking the Ice podcast. No, that is not a Zoom background. I'm actually on the Atlantic Ocean or next to it, whatever you call it. Um, I am on vacation, but I brought my equipment because salt air is just good for electronics. Uh, This week, we have Lenny Clark coming back on the podcast. If you don't know Lenny Clark, you've probably seen him on the Joe Rogan podcast, all the late night talk shows. He's been in movies. TV shows like Rescue Me and on Fox News as a political expert, apparently. And I love the Jews. Oh, sure. friend, Lenny Clark, friend of sure, the Jews. Sure, sure. I married a Jew. Okay. Yeah, good. it didn't work out. Well, but I never right. raised the Jews. No, no, you no. Did. No, right. I brought it up. Also, thank you to our sponsors, Garage Doors Plus, Invoke Media Solutions, Wolfpack Coffee, and Basil's Pizza and Subs. Now, get to Lenny Clark, and I'm going to go teach my seven-week-old daughter how to swim in the ocean. Great people, Boston. People like Paul Revere, John Hancock. The Boston Strangler. <laughs> and Lenny Clark. Let's make him happy. Okay, Lenny, here we are, baby. All right. If it was illegal to say stupid things into a microphone. Why must you be so stupid? These guys would be doing life without parole. Hey, everybody. We're back from prison. Why do we keep encouraging this kind of behavior? It's the Breaking the Ice podcast with Josh Dolan. You know, we could, like, go to jail for this. Along with Mike Shu. And Isaiah Mosca Hanna Bonsa Mana Blitz Boskowitz. Whatever the hell his name is. Oh. All right. Alexa, oh. shut up. Shut up, you fucking whore. Stop. Oh, Jesus boys. Christ. Lenny's here. You got whores Le- in the house. Lenny. You say, Josh, how you doing, kid? Good. How are you? Hey, man, I've been worse. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Hey, Lenny, uh, we're uh, we're hiring a sales manager. You think you, you want to help us with a promo to hire a fucking person that could actually sell some shit for breaking the ice? Yep. Whatever you need. I'm here. Oh, dude, you should just fucking tell him. And we're recording now. You want to make a shitload of money? You want to sell the best fucking podcast on the planet? You need to reach out to these motherfuckers. Let's go. Uh, anybody interested in becoming a sales manager for this particular podcast would be out of their mind not to. Look at the people you're dealing with. There's no way you're going to fuck up. And there's only only up for you to go. Sell, 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 you son of a bitch. Do it from your bed. Do it from your car. Do it from the beach. All you need is a phone. Cold call. Get people to buy into the shit. And you will become a millionaire. See you at the top. <laughs> Done. Like a professional. And I, I, I apologize for the beginning of this podcast. You may hear a baby crying. I don't know if you can hear that right now. Doesn't that kid have a job yet? Jesus Christ. No. Josh doesn't even have a fucking job. Wow. How <laughs> old is the baby? You're fine. How old is the baby? She is six weeks old. I could get you good money for her. Yeah, Could right. You? Oh. That's a fresh baby right there. Oh, yeah. See? People die. It's all about the connections. Right. I know a guy. So... <laughs> How you doing, kid? Good. You're doing great, Lenny. How you been doing? I mean, last I heard from you, you had a stroke. Oh, yeah, man. That was bad. That what was the weird. fuck? Well, you know what? I, uh, I, I, I knew something was wrong. And then when I called someone and said, hey, am I, uh, do I sound normal? They go, even worse than normal. And <laughs> I popped two bear aspirin, which I, by the way, should be doing a commercial for bear. Because right. it saved my life. I jumped in my truck and I drove myself to the hospital. Now, in how about nine one one? Road, what the fuck? I love. I live up in the woods a mile off a dirt road, off another dirt road. One wrong turn, Lenny's gonna be like like, like Kirk Douglas. <laughs> 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 you know, I can do that because he's dead now. But that's why I was talking. And I went into the uh, I went into the hospital and they said, Lenny, what's up? And they go, Oh, geez, you're having a stroke. So they wheeled me in, they shot me in the ass with something that gave me my speech back, which was nice. Because then uh, the doc walked out, he said, nice ass. You know, because, uh, and they said, what? I said, I have gas. So now uh, they said, well, what's wrong, Lenny? I said, well, this stroke is really, uh, it's affecting me. He says, yeah, um, it's a massive one. And I go, really? I said, well, maybe I should just go back home and lie down. And they go, no, no. We've got you going on a helicopter that's inbound now in 15 minutes to the Mass General. I went, what? I said, I got to go home and hide shit. So now <laughs> they, 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 they bring him, oh, they bring him, 
they bring in a group of people, right? The first guy comes in. Hello, Lenny, I'm Vadi. Hi, Vadi, how you doing? He goes, we have a white male, 67 years of age, uh, sweating profusely. His uh, blood pressure is through the roof. His heart rate is 180 beats a minute. He's having trouble speaking. He's paralyzed on his right side. I'm watching this guy and I'm going, he's good. And I go, shit, he's talking about me. So now, <laughs> and then, and then, you know, in comes the nurse and she's all decked out in gear. Six foot three brunette named Heidi. And all I want to do is climb to the top of her and yodel. So now uh, they, they said, well, everything's going to be fine, Mr. Clark. And they put me on a gurney and they strap me in and they start wheeling me out to the helicopter. Meanwhile, it's on the vineyard. So everyone on the vineyard knows me. They go, Lenny, how you doing, Lenny? I said, how do you think I'm doing? I'm strapped into a gurney. I'm not doing good. And the guy goes, hey, man, can I get an autograph? I go, I'm strapped in, nitwit. All right. And the guy goes, all right, yeah, get a quick selfie. So I get outside, and then there's another guy, who's the pilot, and they're going to try and put me in this helicopter filled with equipment and stuff. And I'm going, man, if I was a fat bastard like I was before, I wouldn't have been able to fit in or <laughs> And so, so now they're wheeling me in, they're strapped into this gurney and I'm going, and I'm looking at Heidi and she's, Mr. Clark, I said, yeah, I'm a big fan of yours. I'm going, how big, how big a fan, Heidi? How, how, big, how much do you love Lenny? So, I mean, I'm worried because if this thing goes down, I mean, I'm going to have to chop, I'll shoot through the straps just to try and save Heidi. So, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and I've, been, I've been in a lot of helicopters, but never strapped down to a gurney and, and wow. never strapped down without a safe word. I was very nervous. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. You know, that's what you get, Lenny, for getting into shape. Yeah, okay. right. it's I mean, always the healthy ones. You, know, you the, Teddy Bruschi. Yeah, you, you, I mean, you, you, you have abs, everything, and then that's what happens. You should have just stayed the fat bastard. I bet you wouldn't. Well, you probably, we probably wouldn't be talking to you, but still, you wouldn't have had the stroke. You know, <laughs> right. you're absolutely right. We yeah. wouldn't have been talking. <laughs> Well, we're glad you're with us, man. Absolutely. We're glad you're glad you're up and you you sound normal. You know, you sound just as obnoxious and as loud as ever. So that's healthy. That's a healthy Lenny Clark. It's like nothing even happened. And what that's always the best timing too, when you're going through a life threatening situation and people are saying, I'm a big fan. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. when we land the helicopter at the mass general, uh, we're, we're hovering off about six feet off the deck of the roof of the Mass General, and it's swaying like a, like a bad movie. And I'm going, just turn the key off, turn the key off, let it drop, you know, because I don't want to open the stock. And people drive by in the expressway and go, is that Lenny Clark in flames? Yeah. So I think that's what we did. So we land, we assault the Mass General, boom, and the guy rips the mask off. He goes, Lenny, it's me, Kevin. I used to fly it for Ernie Buck. I'm going, it never ends. It never ends. Right? Yeah. Jesus Christ. I was in the emergency room one time with a collapsed lung and they found out I worked at WAF and as they're putting the chest tube, like stabbing me through my ribs, the, uh, the nurse was saying, so what's Danielle like? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't, I got the I same don't thing. know. When I, was, when I was in a car accident uh, years and years ago, I was driving, a guy blew his red light. It's like 3.30 in the morning here in Worcester and he, he like clips the front of me. And, uh, and so the ambulance shows up and I'm sitting on the side of the curb because I dove out of the car because I don't know when, when airbags go off, they have this powder on them. That's like some kind of lubricant. And so the, it looked like the car was filled with smoke. So I dove out of the, after I hit a tree, I dove out of the car, like Magnum PI style because I thought the car was on fire. So I'm sitting by my car and the guy, the, the paramedic comes up and he's like, are you all right? And I said, okay. And he goes, stand up. He goes, grab my hands and squeeze my hands as hard as you can. And I was like, well, I'll buy me dinner first. Oh, and he was like, okay, you're doing all right. And so I'm squeezing his hands. He goes, okay, what's your name? And I said, Mike. And he said, what's your last name? I said, Shoe. And he goes, Mike Shoe. <laughs> AF. And he looks over to the other guys in the ambulance who are treating the other people. And he's like, hey, it's Mike Shoe from AAF. And they're like, oh, awesome. Hey, where's LB? It's like, I, it's, no, he he goes goes straight straight he's in the fucking trunk. Where, I mean, what the fuck? I just, you know, I could have a concussion. It, yeah, it's it's weird. It's a weird but, thing. But, but, we, but we never bitch when we get pulled over and we're shit-faced and they're like, oh, it's Lenny Clark. I know you don't drink anymore, but those moments of like, we love it when you notice us. But then, like, dude, I need a fucking lung. Yeah, I don't give a shit. Don't ask me about Danielle. Stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the first time I witnessed an accident with the airbag going off and all that powder, 
I yeah. thought it was slow. I <laughs> dove into the crash. <laughs> you put your face in the bag. Right? <laughs> Am I high yet? How did, I did that much coke that it got into my steering wheel. That's how much. Right. Coke <laughs> right? Like the 80s were, that's been there since the 80s. You know, in a, just in, a just in the fabric of the seats. <laughs> that line from Arrested Development when he says, there's money in the banana hut. It's right. more like Lenny, there's cocaine in the steering wheel. Right. I literally mean there was cocaine in the fucking steering wheel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, so I got a chance to see him. I got a chance to see you, Lenny, a couple of weeks ago because I haven't seen you. We haven't seen each other in a long time. Right. Pandemic fucking ass hats. But going to Giggles and, and going under the Prince tent. We talked to Tony V last episode. That is fucking so cool. That is just a, it's like, and, and I think it was you that got up or someone got up and said, here I am. I've made it. I'm on the fucking, I'm on Route 1 in Saugus under a oh, fucking yeah. tent. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, in a parking lot. It's not even in a parking lot. Exactly. Parking lot. The parking lot of a pizza joint on, on Route 1 southbound. I made it my <laughs> top of the world. <laughs> and you, and you and Tony V, I love it because. There was a, you remember that I came over, talked to you, talked to Tony, talked to a few other people. Yeah. It's like your green room was a bunch of fucking lawn chairs yeah. for yeah. fat guys smoking yeah. fucking cigarettes, yeah. uh, smoking cigars. Smoking cigars, yeah. <laughs> it was good. It was good to get out and see you again, brother. Uh, the thank you, man. And it was nice to see you. Cheer. You know, when uh, well, people, sometimes people go, do you know who I am? I say to them, hey, do you know who I used to be? <laughs> <laughs> It was big, it was big. Uh, but anyway, we got, uh, Mike, am I going to do your show tomorrow? Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm going to call you later. tomorrow and record okay. a, a, again. So we'll do this whole thing except a PG-13 version. Except, yes. except yeah. that one, people will hear it. Right. Oh, oh, that's right. No one watches this thing. Oh, that's Josh. Right. Josh, all we need is a good sales manager. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Only one. That's it. There's so many so what, people watching this right now. All eight people that are watching this when it comes on have dollar signs in their eyes. I'm pretty oh sure. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Talk yeah, about but they, they, they don't want to work for it. They just want the government to mail it to them. It's right. so fucking stupid. So you, you, saw, you <laughs> talked about going on Mike's show on, on, on Pike FM. So talk about what's happening July 20th. This podcast will be out within a week or before. So July 20th at Polar Park in Worcester. You, Tony V, and all your friends are doing... Uh, a benefit for what? Talk about that. Uh, okay. There was a police officer by the name of Manny Familia who uh, dove into a, a, a lake, a, a river, something. And I don't know what that yeah, got. It was, was a pond. This, a it pond. Was, okay. Yeah. So he dove into a pond to save a young kid drowning, and he didn't think the water was that deep, and he can't even swim. But he he, he risked his own life to help a young kid, and he drowned. So it's, it's a terrible tragedy. He left a wife and two kids. Oh. And uh, I mean, here's a guy who dedicates his life to doing things for people like us and we lose him. So we want, they, they called me and said, Lenny, we're gonna do this little thing. We're gonna raise some money for, for this cop who dove in and tried to save the kid died. I said, okay. And it went from a, a 200 seat restaurant to Polar Park. That yeah. was like 11,000 people. So I, thank God you guys are promoting this because <laughs> I don't want to go out there and be you know, talking to 50 people. I am the luckiest man in yeah. wo 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 Worcester. You know, come on. I want, to, I, want to, I want to make money for this guy's family. I want to see the park because I haven't been able to get in because it's sold out every game. And I have a Coney Island hot dog because I think back to my, my days, early days in Worcester. Well, in the early 70s, when I would have a, a, a hot dog at the Honey, Coney Island hot dog with the mustard dripping down on the neon sign and sit in the window and watch the Worcester Wino gang wars. It was yeah. terrific. Yeah. Yeah. Worcester in the 70s and 80s, and I guess you could say the 90s too, was a very, very different place from what it is now. Now it's like a center for business and arts and culture right. and restaurants and stuff. But you know, for my friends here who who lived, uh, uh, you know, in their teenage years through the 70s in Worcester, it was just gang fights and heroin. That's and pretty dark. much it was that, dark. Yeah, it was totally dark in the dark. daytime. It was just an awful. Yeah. It was a tough, tough place. You know what? So, what places did you play back in the day in Worcester? Do you remember? I played. Uh, yeah, I played a place called Plums, which I had. Oh sex my God! With. They had comedy yeah. at Plums. I had sex with a waitress there. It was really. <laughs> Oh, dude, he was so happy. Oh, God, yes. 
I, I, I kept going back for the sex, not the money, the sex. Uh, and then, uh, then, then what happened? Uh, then I, I worked plums. I worked, I worked a place called Stitches. Was in the, it was in the woods someplace in like an abandoned building. It sucked. And then I worked, uh, I worked a couple of pl- Oh, Mike Shue, you've lived in Worcester all your life, right? Well, no, well, past 20, like 21 years. All right. One of my first gigs in Worcester was at a place called the Mailbox. Oh, my it? God. Still here. It's still okay. here. Yeah. A like notorious A-bar. place. Yeah. A-bar. And I go in there and I'm doing my stuff. I go, hey, man, where's all the chicks? Everyone starts laughing. And I go, man, there's some good looking pussy in Worcester. It's just not in here. They're laughing and laughing. And laughing. Then I, it dawns on me, mother of God, I'm in a gay bar. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and right down from all the bears, all the bears were there. And I'm saying, oh boy. I said, <laughs> a bear oh, I, I, just, I just, I started talking fast and funny. And, and I said, all right, you guys are great. Good night. And I got out, I'm running out to the car. They running with me to give me my money. And they go, when are you coming back? I go, oh, next week, next week. Just a, just a total, total cash in the window. Woo. You can find me at Plums. <laughs> Yeah. And that's not a, that's not homophobia. That's stupid. I'm mean, I'm working a mailbox. A mailbox. What kind of place is that? I didn't even think mailbox. It's a poop shoot. It's right. the yeah. game mailbox. Box. Mailbox. Hello. So you didn't fuck the waitress at the mailbox either? Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, they they well, used to I be like they, they used to be in an alley or something like near the the DCU center, the Centrum, and now they moved or they moved years ago out to. I guess you would, I mean, it really is like every city has one. And for some reason, uh, like that's where I guess gay clubs go. I don't know why, but it's in the meatpacking district. Shocking. No, no, seriously. It's like, it's like in New York too, right? It's like, it's the meat. It's always the meatpacking district or the leather district or something. And it's like, okay. And they're the gay bars. And it's just like, it's like, you know, you're, I don't know. It just happens. And it's, I'm not even making a joke. It's just fact. I don't know why yeah. they the, the the places all open up around there, but they they moved right next to like one of the biggest like butcher distribution centers. No, 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 no. Stay with meat packing. Right, it was a meat packing place, but it was like the place was <laughs> called, and they just closed down. The place was called Fairway Beef, and no. on top of the building they had a giant. It was like a giant steel bowl with huge giant balls hanging yeah. down off of it one night you, guess, like a couple I mean, years ago a guy like got drunk at the mailbox and climbed up on top of the building and tried he was up there with a crowbar trying to pry the balls off the bull and the as you should showed up and had to talk him down you know? <laughs> yeah. so the mailbox found, is still here and it's still rocking yeah i found i found the worcester gays very polite friendly intelligent enjoyed my act as opposed to the to the gays in Provincetown, where they'll knock you down and suck your dick against your will. It's, oh. Uh, it's, oh. it's a well, little were different. Were you doing a show at Purgatory or something? Because that's a fun place. <laughs> no. I don't even know I if that's still well. open. Yeah, I've been there for a while. The sign, again, the sign has a couple of giant steel balls on it. So that must be like a. There's I a theme. theme. It's a theme. It's, be, yeah. it's only two. And then if it's three, it's a pawn shop, I guess. Right. So, right? Something like that. <laughs> all, of this, all of this material, none of it we'll be using at the family friendly. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and we're going to do it Polar Park for Manny Familiar and his wonderful family. I just uh, talked but, to uh, Letty. You told me you did you did uh, Zoe and Beatles show earlier to promote yeah. this. So I was talking to one of the reps that works over there before I did this because we do yeah. business together. And I said, uh, you know, Lenny, I told her what you were doing. She's like, that's amazing. And I said, Lenny's coming on our podcast. And I said, he was on with Zoe and he, you know, he mentioned that he was starting to talk about ass rape and they get a little fucking worried. I'm like, yeah, because they still still deal with the fucking FCC. We don't. Yeah. And, I, and yeah. she laughs. She goes, I can't wait to watch this episode because I'm like, if he get if he grazes the ass rape thing in the FCC, yeah. that's one thing. You can come on this show and literally tell me you want to ass rape me and we don't give a fuck. Oh, oh no, I'm, I'm good. I, you don't <laughs> yeah, have so, so please, please. Fun, no, thank you. No, we, thank you. We need someone to sell the show for us. So please, there you go. This oh, sorry. Right there. What you can sell. Well, that's a promo right there. But to defend myself in the ass raping, uh, (laughs) there's this big defund the police thing now. And if they had defunded the police when I was a kid, I I, I would have robbed banks and armored cars, as as most of my friends did. And uh, I just was deathly afraid of going to jail and being ass raped because there there was a lot of that going on, you know? Still is. Yeah. 
Yeah, the series yeah. Oz did a lot to to prevent crime because people didn't want to end up in prison because of that, because of what they That's showed right. on Oz. You know, That's it's unbelievable. Right. And you know what's funny about the defund the police people? And I recognize that there there is a problem with police brutality. And there are some bad policemen. Get that, them out of the system. That's it. Well, it's it's a matter of training. So instead Education. of like taking all the money away from the police, maybe focus it on some different kind of training. But I'll tell Correct. you, the first the person that says defund the police will be the first person to call the police when they're in trouble. Exactly. Right? And then they'll call and nobody will pick up and they'll be like, oh, all right, I defunded the police. Well, I, I guess I got to take care of this home invasion myself. Right. You know? Yeah. Which, which I will. <laughs> now, there are some people like Lenny who are prepared for something like that, of course. Yes, I but am. I, you know, at my home on the vine at my estate on Martha's Vineyard, I am uh, I'm secure. Yes. And I have about a 275 yard kill range. So yep. uh, if you're coming, be quiet. But even that won't help when the dogs in the infrared. And the motion detectors, and then Big Daddy Nude with a shotgun. Hello, kids. <laughs> or just call the police. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I feel like Phil Labonte from All That Remains is another one that has that that used that term that the range. You know, you've got the, that kill yeah, the range. Kill, yeah, the the kill range. He's he's three hundred and fifty. He believes three hundred and fifty feet is more effective. And and we had and we had uh, and oh, we yeah. had. Oh, uh, oh, Mike, oh, Mike. I, I I I agree with him. However. You gotta make do with what you got. Well, you live on the vineyard. I'm surprised they let you have the lasers and the dogs to begin yeah, with. They don't know. The vineyard. Yeah. <laughs> they well, know now. Don't the ask, dogs, apologize later. The dogs vote too on the vineyard. All dogs <laughs> are registered with vote. Oh, Wait, so. do you have a do you have a movement called the All Do uh Dogs Lives Matter? <laughs> no, but I did go to vote and everyone said, Hey Lanny, how you doing? Hey Lenny, do you have an ID? And I said, hang on a second. I'm gonna call the news media. And they went, no, 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 you have to call the news. We, we all know who you are. I go, exactly. Why do you need to see something that says who I am? What the hell? <laughs> oh, shit. You know, I, I kind of, I do believe in voter ID because yeah. I, I think we, I don't know, it just seems to me it's weird that they don't ask for one. And I've lived here, like I said, I've lived here in Worcester for 25 years. I've never once been asked to see any identification to go vote. Yeah, and me either. It just seems like it's, you know. You can't buy cough syrup without an ID. Yeah. But you can just, vote. You know yeah, what I mean? I, Come on. Yeah, and, I just, I, I kind of, so I kind of agree with the voter ID thing because it's just, it just seems like anybody could walk in there and give an address. And if that address is in the book, then they can. Well, just, it's weird. Every time I go to get my oxycodone, they want like three forms of ID, but I don't get asked when I go to vote. What the fuck? Well, I was just going to say, like at the pharmacy, I, I had a prescription and I had my wife pick it up for me yesterday. And I was like, oh, wait, I don't think you can pick up other people's prescriptions. And she was like, eh, yeah, they gave it to me. And I was like, so I can just go in and guess a name and they'll just hand it over. <laughs> Gosh, most of the times I go in and go, all these people that are all those all those medications that are waiting for people. They ask me if I'd pick them up. <laughs> it's right. like an Uber Eats, but for meds. I'll yeah, just stay yeah. in the M. Um... I, yeah. I'll take all the morphine, the oxycodone. You keep the aspirin. Josh, what pills do you guys? What pills do you guys usually pick up? Just asking for a friend. And where's your pharmacy? <laughs> oh, it's definitely Adderall. <laughs> oh, it's de oh yeah, Adderall. it's the highest level of Adderall. Uh, Gentlemen, okay. if I had known Delauded came in pill form back in the day, I would I, still be a junkie today. <sighs> Delauded. The drug that's good for a headache or a missing limb. Pop a Dilaudid and everything's better. That's right. <laughs> you just did a commercial for them. We got to put that on the CVS wow. fucking scroll. Wow. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, I mean, hero heroin back at the, did you ever get into the heroin? I, I smoked it. Yep. I, 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 did you ever do I didn't it? know I you could boot. smoke it. I thought it was I liquid. Oh, oh yeah, no, I didn't boot it, but I yep. smoked it. I chewed it. Yeah, that was terrible. Uh, I put it on. I put on cereal, and, uh, <laughs> but I didn't. I never booted it. I was well. The point. The point is, it's like it's crazy that that that. I mean, if you look at the level of what oxycodone is, it's basically a pill form of fucking heroin. Wow. Yeah, it's an opiate. Yeah, and it's it's way stronger. It's fucked up. That's why there's a problem. Need. Yeah. Well, like well, even Adderall, it's it's crystal meth. It's just a controlled amount. 
Unless you take the whole bottle. Yeah, it's personal math. So, so again, I, what's the address of your pharmacy for us, please? Florida. When I, when I was at the end, at the end of my my run, I wanted to go <laughs> my run uh, like the Philippines or Vietnam, someplace, like and 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 spend a week in an opium den. You know? Wow. It, it just, yeah, that's what I. That was one of my. I was my bucket list of drugs. Uh, Did you do uh, it? Uh, did I do it? Nah, I got too. Nah, you only made it to fucking Everett. <laughs> That's like a wine drinker wanting to go out to California. You wanted to. Go to what was farm. what was what was your last? If you can think back to what was your last fucking bender where that was it? Was it rehab? Was it something oh. fucked up happened? When did you smash into the wall? And when was that? Okay, there it is. I was shooting a movie in 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 Boston, uh, Southie. And my job was to, uh, I was an enforcer and I, I had killed a couple of people earlier in the movie. And um, <laughs> I had, I, in I the had movie. that I had to uh, put up against the wall. So I meet the guy, he's a kid. Uh, he's, he happens to be my sponsor to this day. This is 25 years ago. So I, I, I meet him and he's such a nice kid, a big guy. And I said, okay, I'm going to put you against this wall. I said, we'll go easy and we'll make it look better in the shot. We don't have to hurt anybody. So we do it and they go, cut, cut. And they go, Lenny, what's wrong with you? Come on, man, you're supposed to be in a book. Push this fucking guy around. So I said to him, well, he said, no, Mr. Clark, please, please go through. I said, okay. So they said, action. Next thing you know, I put this guy through a fucking wall and take out a door. And all of a sudden, everyone's yelling, Lenny, Lenny, this is Whitey Bulger's place. We we don't own this shit. I'm going, good night. So <laughs> Could have uh, opened it, with that. <laughs> yeah, right? so, so anyway, they wrapped me. And they go, that's a wrap on Lenny Clark. And, what's that? and I had got a bottle of whiskey, a bottle of, uh, a case of beer, a bag of grass, and a bag of blow. And this kid comes up to me, my sponsor, Phil, he says, Hey, Lenny, you happy? I said, I couldn't be happy. He says, you want to get real happy? I said, you don't scare me. I said, okay, we'll pick you up at 6.30 in the morning. I go, right. So me and my childhood buddy, Donnie Wiggle, we go out bar hopping and we're drinking at every bar in Boston. And the thing was, we were going to go to every bar till we got to a bar where they didn't know who I was because we were drinking free. Mm. And when we got to a bar where they didn't know who I was, we, we were going we to stop and drink there. So I ended up at the Tall Ships down in uh, Faneuil Hall. I don't even know if it's there anymore. And uh, they, they didn't know who I was. They started charging. I said, okay, so we're laughing and we're pretty fucking lit up. And then the guy goes, wait a minute, you're Lenny Clark. And I go, you fucking ruined it. So now we get really shit faced <laughs> and we go back to the hotel. So we're at the, at the Ho Holiday Inn uh, right now by the Mass General Hospital and I knock on the door. My buddy freaks out. He says, what the fuck? He says, I had some guys. We're going to party with them. He goes, I can't party. I can't leave the room. I'm too high. I go, well, here's some more blow. Just stay here, you know, and sleep it off if you want. I got I to go with these guys. You ready? Yeah. So they take me out and I get in a van with six guys and we go to St. Bridget's in, in South Boston and we go downstairs and we walk in and it's a fuck an AA meeting. I thought we were going wow. to a rave. So now I'm in there and we're listening to AA speakers. I'm going, is this a gag? Am I being punked? What's going on? They go, just listen, listen. I go, well, you want to do a bump? I still have blow on me. And no, 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 no. So I waited and I said, at the halftime, they go, I mean, hey man, that was pretty good. Yeah, and I said, I'll go back to the hotel. They go, no, that's just the halftime. Listen, listen. So I started to come down. Now I'm jonesing. Now I'm paying attention to listen because I didn't want to go out of my mind. I've been sober ever since that day. Wow, that wow. did it. No way. Just like that? Yeah. That yeah. did it? Yeah, well, that and the fact that my sponsor wouldn't let me go home. He kept coming to my house and waking me up and taking me to more meetings. You know, he's, I said, we, we went to one yesterday. He goes, can't stay clean on yesterday's shower. Let's go, suit up. You uh, know? He, he, he looked at you and he looked yeah. at you and saw this and out of, this is what a sponsor would do, I would imagine. He said, yeah. I, I love this guy. I worked with him. This is good. I'm going to help him. This guy saved my life. He saved my life. Wow. And he's still your sponsor to this day. To, to this day. I took him to dinner last night. It was his birthday. Um, yeah, but I got to tell you, he, he saved a lot of other people too. But I mean, this was a guy who wouldn't let me go. You know, he, Good. You know every day. He was at my house every day. My mother would go, he's upstairs, Phil. Go get him, you know. And uh, he, 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 he's got me through a lot of, a lot of stuff. That's you know, awesome. The most, uh, shocking thing about that story to me, Lenny, is that there was a meeting at 6.30 in the morning. I mean, is, that, <laughs> is that a early common early. thing? 
Early bird, uh, man. Get up. Get up. Don't be drunk. Uh, Go to a meeting. Yeah. For 40 no longer at, They're no longer at St. Bridget's. They've moved to St. Monica's. But there are early birds, you know, for people before you go to work. And then okay. there's the lunchtime meetings. Yeah. And then the nighttime meetings. And all sorts of stuff. Matter of fact, I got to go to a meeting now. But uh, I, I, I love you guys. And, yeah. and, and thank you. Thank you for doing this. And Mike, we'll work out the details for your show. I worked out with Frank Foley. You know Frank Foley? Yes, love Frank. Good yeah. guy. So Frank, Frank said he hooked it up. So I'm supposed to call you tomorrow at 10 o'clock. No, before 10, if we can do before 10, because I'm doing a gig at 10 in New Hampshire. What time do you come on the air, Mike? I'm on six to, well, I can, I can probably do something at like 940. Okay. Is that too, uh, is that too early or late? No, it's not, I'm we can it out for later. Well, it's audio, so just, just, just yeah. do it on the phone. I'm driving to New Hampshire. Uh, I'm leaving here about eight o'clock. Oh, some okay. of them. And I got to go to New Hampshire. So I'll be in the car, in the truck, and I'm more than willing to do whatever you need, and I'll be okay. clean. I'll be nice. Um, <laughs> so, so if you Start get, with if you ass get, rape. <laughs> if you get a break in the action, Mike, hit my number. You got my number. Okay. Okay. I will, um, I'll, I'll give you a call. We'll, we'll work it out from there. If not, we can, yeah. we can do something else, but yeah. Okay. Like yeah, we're the station I work for, the Pike. We're one of the sponsors of the show, so we're trying to, you know, we're pumping it up as much as we can. Cause yeah. it's the Pike. Yeah. I yes. love the Pike. <laughs> hey, let's re All let's right, recap. Guys. July two. Let's recap. July, Tuesday, July twentieth. July twentieth. Huge, fundra Park. huge fundraiser at Polar yeah. Park. You can yeah. go on. Probably it's all over Polar Park's website. It's all over yeah. Pike FM's website. Yeah. Josh, we can put this out on uh, BreakingTheIcePodcast.com, but. Good luck uh, at the show, Letty. You're awesome. Thanks for coming on. Oh, thanks, guys. And the I after party will be Josh. at Plums or the mailbox? Yeah, the after oh. party is at the mailbox. <laughs> All right. Thank I you, guys. I feel fucking dirty. Appreciate it. See you later, guys. Hey, bye. Thanks, Lenny. All right. I don't know how to get See you later. I have no idea what I'm doing. I yeah, know, it takes like the awkward part of Zoom life. <laughs> you got to find the leave meeting button. And then when you do, you're just kind of staring at each other like, okay. Do we start oh, talking? Well, yeah. no. <laughs> there we go. And right, Isaiah man. left too. All right. All right. Wow. Well, wow. Isaiah's gone too. Oh, geez. Wow. Do we keep going or, or I guess we, we can say whatever we want now and finish our sentence. Jeez. If Isaiah's not here, who's that guy? <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> no. Yeah. Lenny's fantastic. And, um, you know, I, their whole, the whole, th kind of thing we've been saying on the air at the pike about this show is let's fill the park yeah and hopefully you know you can go to pikefm.com link up get your tickets you can go to polarpark.com to get your tickets there or if how just, many seats is it um geez you know what josh that's that's a good question it's i i something i can't recall right now <laughs> <laughs> but it's a it's a you know it's a beautiful place to to watch a game and uh they're they're constantly adding on things because um you know they're uh, they've just added like a berm where you can go out and sit on the grass. You see some baseball yeah. parks like that. You know, they got a lot of great food. A lot of Worcester places are represented inside all the craft beers and stuff like that. It's a great place for the whole family too. So, Oh, um, and I can imagine there's going to be some amazing concerts coming through there. Yeah. You know, when I talked to uh, the, the president of the Worcester Red Sox is Dr. Charles Steinberg, who had a hand in, you know, doing all the ceremonies for opening day for the uh, Boston Red Sox and stuff. And, uh, yeah. When I talked to him last, he said, yeah, that's totally in the plan, having music come through there and, uh, you know, doing things like uh, they would, you know, when the team's out of town having, you can go out there and have dinner, you know, out in the outfield, you know, they'll light up the outfield, they have it nice and romantic, you can go out there and have some, they'll have tables out there and stuff. This doesn't sound like Worcester. I know, right? <laughs> you know, it, Worcester's, a, Worcester's an awesome place. It's come a long, long way since I first moved here. But yeah, so we're trying to we're trying to fill that park for uh, Officer Familian. Excuse me, excuse me, I'm podcasting. Okay, all right. Let's. It's yeah. Don't now. It looks like you're doing something nasty to the dog. All right. At least she's not screaming like my daughter. Right. Right. Oh, well, just left by the way. So that was <laughs> yeah. It, she still does that. So. Oh really? So it it doesn't end. Yeah. Oh, never right. ends, Josh. Never ends. You know. So, right. uh, the the you're gonna have Lenny on the pike tomorrow. I know. It's just kind of weird. <laughs> we're just gonna talk about the same stuff. <laughs> a uh, lot of double interviews. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's a good show because um, Tony V is gonna be there and um, 
Christine Frank Santarelli, Hurley, Christine Frank Hurley, Hurley, right? Hurley. Yep, yep, Christine Hurley. And uh, there's going to be a bunch of, and they say, and others. That's what the flyer says. So, so it means whoever performs at Giggles will be there. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you know, and now um, what's funny is like there, this, uh, there's a club here in town called, I'm uh, not a club, uh, there's a place here in Webster called Indian Ranch and and they're uh, they're like a little amphitheater out there on Lake Webster and they're they're having bands and stuff and they're going to start having comedy so they just sent me an email saying would you like to talk to you know Jimmy Dunn or, or <laughs> Bill Noonan or I'm like oh yeah oh sure I'll talk to them yeah okay <laughs> okay okay <laughs> they're, they're cool I'm we've sure already rehearsed the conversations that we'll have so just, I'll just redo the uh, I'll just play the audio from the podcast you know and just say you had him on hey it's less work for you right yeah you know so all right man well listen um i just want to ask you some baby questions are you getting any sleep <laughs> no i'm not yeah. yeah it's i'm i'm barely alive right now right yeah you're just running on empty right now right my brain is buzzing i'm having a hard time forming sentences right now which is a great thing for you know doing this and trying to do uh demos to send out to radio stations right right and like try, i can't even get a sentence out i'm like yeah let's take care of a child and yeah yeah it's this this is very similar to the sleep deprivation training they give to like navy seals oh it fit like, <laughs> i would have rang that bell already so. yeah right <laughs> but everything's going all right with the baby Everything's going great with her. She's going through uh, what? Oh, fucking cats! I, I'm obviously back in my house now. Um, we gave up the other apartment, <laughs> so we're we're back down to one. And if it's not the baby crying, the dogs barking, or the cats ruining something, and or my wife saying, "Hey, can you um?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I gotta say before before we wrap up, I was uh, we had a big party at this uh, club called Rascals here in Worcester, and uh, Mistress Carrie was there, and it was just kind of like the unveiling of the new pike. We are now, we had a, like a proclamation from city councilor, Matt Wally saying we're Worcester's official rock station, which was cool, even though we are actually Worcester's only rock station. But still, <laughs> it was made official by the city. And, um, and a lot of people were asking where you were or how the baby was doing. Really? So that was really nice. I just wanted to relay that to you. Oh, cool. They were like, Hey, is Josh here? I'm like, why would Josh be here? He goes, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> How's this baby doing? And I was, I was like, wow, cool. You <laughs> actually listen to the podcast. I know. I'm always surprised too. <laughs> right. Yeah. So a lot of people were asking about you and, and, uh, and the family. So just wanted to let you know that. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's definitely a weird feeling where like, you're in public and then somebody asks how your wife and baby are doing. And I'm like, what? who are you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is that, it's like, how's, how's the baby? I'm like, who are you? What are you talking about? It's Why like, do you know that you were talking about it on the air? I'm like, Oh yeah, that's right. Sorry. I haven't slept in four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wish I knew about that party. I, I would have tried to sneak out to it. Yeah, well, I purposely didn't invite you. Like, uh, you know, just like you. Carrie to yeah, her yeah. wedding. Yep. That's absolutely. <laughs> All right, that's man. my whole life. So, you know what you should do right now? So did did Laura take the baby? She did. I said, leave immediately. You know what you should do? What? Record yourself talking and put it on a loop. And she'll think you're still doing the podcast and just sleep for like 30 minutes. Did you just watch Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Right. right. <laughs> that's what you do, man. Just That is a good idea. Put her ear up to the door. Oh, he's still doing the podcast. And you'll be, you'll be out like a light. All right, we have 50 minutes left to go in this episode. Uh <laughs> All right, man. I will talk to you later. Get some sleep, man, if you can. <laughs> you just took an Adderall. I'm up for the next 13 hours. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. All right, see you. I'll talk to you later, man. <laughs>